the founder and CEO of the Yiddishkeit Initiative, and on behalf of our festival sponsor, the Betsy Hotel South Beach, I welcome you to the inaugural international virtual Why I Love Yiddish Fest 2020. Now, you may ask, what is the Yiddishkeit Initiative and why have a Why I Love Yiddish Fest in 2020? So the answer is the Yiddishkeit Initiative is a nonprofit organization that I founded with my mother, Columbia University professor Miriam Hoffman, and we are dedicated to preserving, presenting, and promoting the best in Jewish culture and Yiddish language. And why a Why I Love Yiddish Fest is because we are proud of our culture. We are proud of our heritage. We are proud of our language. And apparently 85% of the Jewish people don't consider themselves affiliated with any Jewish organization, but they do consider themselves cultural Jews. So for those who are affiliated, for those who are not affiliated, for those who are Jewish and for those who aren't Jewish, we should celebrate this incredible 5,000-year-old culture. The Yiddish language is over a thousand years old. It's deep, it's beautiful, it's rich, and it should be celebrated. So sit back and enjoy our next program, and thank you for your support. piece is the Knesset menorah. It stands outside the Knesset in bronze. I didn't make the original. The original is about 12 feet high, I guess, cast solid bronze. It was made by an artist who passed away many years ago, Benno Elkin, the original design of the Knesset menorah. This is one of the few things in my gallery that I did not do the original design of. But it made a big impression on me when I went to Jerusalem to live in 1972. And I saw that Knesset menorah and studied it. I saw that it was made of all these different biblical themes. And I went to the Knesset. I talked to Gad Rave, who was the lawyer. And he got me permission to make up to 500 pieces in silver and miniature. And I actually designed all these individual stories in wax, very small, tiny. The original, Ben O'Elkin, he did it in clay, and he did huge pieces. But each one of these are different biblical stories, which had a big influence on my career in Israel, because from that moment on, I started making biblical themes. I love the idea of it so much, and I continue to make this today and I make it in Jerusalem. And uh, I could talk about this forever because each one of these stories are things that you'll see here in my Gallery 22. And all Jewish themes from the Bible, the War of in Independence, Shema Yisrael in the center, and you have the 12 tribes here, 
You have everything that I love to do is in this Knesset menorah. So it's an important piece to me, a big influence in my life. Sterling silver, Jerusalem stone. And now I'm going to go on to the painting that I did of Jerusalem. This is the old city of Jerusalem, the Tower of David, the citadel, as it stands today outside the old city walls at the Jaffa Gate. And here you're looking out on the new city of Jerusalem. You're looking out here on Mamilla, which is now such a beautiful project. Uh, you have here King David Street, where I had my gallery at 22 King David Street for many years, from 1977 to 1990, actually. I had a gallery right there across from the King David Hotel. So this is a very uh, moving and emotional to me. I raised my family here and there's all my daughters. I brought them back here to go to school, but then they went back to Israel. You can take the, the kid out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the kid. And that's my daughters. I speak with them regularly. I spoke with my daughter, Natalie, today. She's now, they all moved to Tel Aviv, but they were all born and raised in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, it's an important piece to me. It's signed, this is the only one. It's got gold leaf here and there and acrylic paint. I painted it with acrylic, offering it to all you people who love Jerusalem, who love Israel, and who love Jewish. This is an original painting that I did on the subject of peace, which my memorial that I did outside Gallery 22, the Garden of Humanity, I did the original in bronze. I was asked many times if I could do this in a painting that they could take home because they liked it so much they would stand out in the garden and, and stare at this piece and it meant so much. Uh, I use a quote, I will write peace on your wings and you will fly all over the world. Here you have my hand actually, <laughs> that's my signature. I got my if you look closely, you'll see all the lines in my hand that I did. But I did it in bronze, in the Garden of Humanity. And that's why I made the colors to look like bronze, because this is what everybody loved it in bronze. But it's children's hands, it's elderly hands, it's all different hands reaching for the bird of peace from all over the world. And uh, this is 40 inches by 40 inches, if you have room for it on your wall. It can be framed, but uh, you can frame it according to your decor, but it doesn't have to be. The sides are all painted, the bottom is painted, and it has uh, a wire in the back of the canvas, so you can just put a nail in the wall and hang it up. This piece represents peace, all the children of the world holding hands, reaching out in tolerance. The quote here is from Maria Montessori, founder of the Montessori School, where they teach children. Peace is what every human being is craving for, and it can be brought about by humanity through the child. That's what we're talking about teaching peace first to the children. That's the only way we will establish real peace. And this is very significant today in this time that we're going through, especially when there are no schools to teach in. No schools are open only virtually today. And this is a subject that I've been talking about for forever. Peace and, and teaching peace to the children. And uh, these are the costumes of all the children of the world are wearing. You've even got a Hasidic Jewish boy here. You've got, uh, you've, you've, you've got the hands, which are my signature hands. I even wear it as a gold pendant around my neck, which are hands clasped in peace and friendship. And this is also from my Garden of Humanity. I've done this in bronze. This is 40 by 40. It's almost the same size as the bronze plaque that's on the uh, northwest side of the monument, of the 14-foot monument out there. 
But uh, this is very symbolic of, of what we need to teach today is peace and uh, tolerance. And all of us come together. Very symbolic. This is called Let My People Go. The story of Moses and his brother Aaron in front of the Pharaoh doing one of his many tricks having the throwing down the staff in front of the pharaoh and it turns into a snake a live snake and you can see the expression and the body language of of the pharaoh as he's sitting back in his chair uh very detailed it's sterling silver electroform i made it in my foundry in jerusalem a foundry that i established in the 70s a process i developed uh, I didn't develop uh, electroforming that was done in, uh, I think, in Russia it was originally discovered electroforming in the 1800s. But I set up a foundry in Jerusalem just to make my biblical sculptures using a special process of electroforming. And that's what you have here. There's an addition of 26 pieces. Every piece is different because they're all made by hand, different bases, there's something different about each one. And uh, this has got gold, 24 karat gold ornamentation on the silver. Uh, you have some on Moses, on the Pharaoh especially, you've got quite a bit of gold. But it's sterling silver, it's uh, stamped 925, and uh, the story of Passover, uh, where I don't think, you know, this is a big, we talk about this every Passover in the Haggadah, this story. And it's one of, one of the many uh, uh, examples of how, how the God of Israel uh, was so powerful that the Egyptians let them go. Let my people go.